Hey there, how's it going? Since last time, I haven't made much progress on Monkeys with Guns. I have three games that are being licensed, and I have to make changes to them to be able to send them off to their new website homes. But I did spend some time this week in Photoshop laying out the control setup screen. I'm still planning to have a playable version out soon, and this is one of the steps in that direction. At this moment, I'm missing out on this control setup screen, as well as the other choices on the title screen. These options will really be the only way I have to communicate with the player when the game is downloaded, since I won't be there to explain anything like at the live demo. So I can't post a build until I have at least the basic versions of these in. As it stands right now, there will be three control inputs the players can choose from. You can have all players using controllers, which is the setup I use when I demo the game. But I did have requests in the alpha to allow one player to use the keyboard. And little secret, it was supposed to be possible. But there was a bug with the way firing was handled, and for some reason it didn't work right on keyboard. But it worked great if everyone had a controller. So, me being the master programmer that I am, disabled the keyboard and called it fixed. I knew this was an issue. I spoke in the last video about keeping the barrier to entry low. At a demo, that means short rounds and fairly simple mechanics. But when talking about players downloading and playing your game, there are other barriers to consider. For instance, how many controllers do you have? I'm going to assume a higher number on average as I imagine most of you are game devs as well. But after talking to my other non-dev gamer friends, most just had the one. Or maybe two if you count the old one that doesn't work well, which is why they have the new one in the first place. I mean, why would they need more? And I know, other players could bring their controllers, but what if you weren't planning to play and now want to? Or they forgot it, or they don't have one. There can always be a reason. First impressions are important, and in today's world, interest and excitement move quickly. If you have players ready to play your game, but can't because they don't have enough controllers, they may never go through the effort of trying again. Of course some still will, but you have to expect most will just move on. So because of that, I now have the option for both one player on a keyboard, as well as two players on a single keyboard. But the keyboard has to have a number pad. I threw together a quick passable mockup and modified some controller and keyboard icons made by LightUp, which was kindly made available for others to use on itch.io. I think the mockup looks alright for the time being, and I eventually want to revisit controller inputs again in the future, meaning the design will probably have to change drastically later anyway. So that's my progress for the week, but before we go, I want to answer a quick question about the engine I use, which I guess I've just shown video but not really talked about before. I use Construct 3, which is a browser-based 2D game engine made by Skira. It uses a visual scripting event system as its code base. Now, just because it's visual scripting doesn't mean I don't still have to write all the logic. For example, if a bullet collides with a player, it checks to see if that bullet is not from that player. If not, it checks the bullet type, because sniper bullets pass through players, while other bullet types are destroyed when hitting a player. Elsewhere, another event handles the bullet death animation when the bullet is destroyed. We then call the player hit function, with parameters like the player that got hit, the bullet's damage amount, the player that fired the bullet, the angle the bullet is traveling, and the type of bullet. Then, the player hit function identifies the player that was hit, deals damage to their health, if they were hit with a shotgun they get knocked back in amount, any other bullet is a lesser amount. Then it changes some info on the player array, so other actions like animations can happen, and finally it tracks the damage dealt by the shooting player for the stat screen. So I still have to do all that, but I don't have to write syntax. And since I'm a graphic designer and have never coded anything before all of this, I'm very used to programs that are more graphically driven. It all works in a way that makes a lot of sense to me, and I'm very comfortable with. Which also means I work very quickly in it, so it's great for game jams. Construct is a fun engine, and I really enjoy using it. If you've never coded before and want to give it a try, there is a free version available, and here are a few tutorial channels I would highly suggest. I was able to learn everything I know, from watching tutorials and then just trying things out with what I had learned. If you already have a foundation in coding, I don't know if Construct is right for you. You'll have to make that decision for yourself. They did recently add the ability to code directly in JavaScript, which is cool. I just don't know what to do with it, but I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that do. I hope that helped give some insight on the engine I'm using, how it works, and why. If you have any more questions, let me know. I'd be happy to answer. And I think I've been rambling for long enough. Thank you very much for watching. To see future devlogs, please consider subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below or message me on Twitter. You can download and play the alpha version of Monkeys with Guns or any of my other games at vimlark.itch.io. I'll be posting the beta build there when it's ready. And I'll talk to you next time. Later.